Today we're going to take a look at the first minute of Jeff Mills' Exhibitionist Mix 3, a legendary performance from 2015, in which he sits alone in a blank room with just a Roland TR-909 drum machine. While his erratic movements may seem confusing at first, there is a method to his madness, and we're going to analyze it in this video. Hello everyone, this is... Jeff Mills taps in most of the rhythms live by hand. He doesn't program them on the step sequencer. To tap in the first beats, he needs a guide, because it would be unnecessarily difficult to do this with only the running light of the sequencer. The Roland TR-909 has no metronome and neither does this Behringer RD-9, so we have to make our own. The rimshot is very well suited for this. You can hear it above most of the other instruments. Just program a step on each quarter note, steps 1, 5, 9 and 13, and you've got a metronome going. To help you hear the beginning of the bar, you can place an accent on the first step. This is where the performance begins. Using the rimshot metronome as a guide, tap in the bass drum on each beat. Next are the hand claps. These are supposed to go right between the kicks into the offbeat. So, if we count 1 and 2, and, three, and, four, and. Then the hand claps will go on all of the ands. If you look closely at Jeff Mills while he's tapping in the first rhythms, you will notice something interesting. He doesn't move his hand like this, as if he was just tapping the hand claps. He moves his hand twice as fast, like this. That's a technique for better staying in the groove. He stabilizes his hand by moving it along to the kick, as well as the hand clap. But of course, he only hits the button every other time. If you have problems hitting the beat, practicing this can help you a lot. Another method is to consciously move your finger away from the trigger into a second position, alternating between the two. During the kick, I move my finger up in the air. And for the hand clap, I move it down to tap. One of Jeff Mills' favorite techniques is to mute an instrument tap in the beat without the audience hearing it, and then unmute the instrument when he needs it. Aside from the preparation aspect, this gives you another big advantage. If your timing is off, nobody will notice. Listen to this. I will play a random part with sloppy timing. As soon as the pattern repeats, everything is quantized. But at that point, the audience has already heard my unquantized mess. Hearing a better version of it immediately after made it even more obvious. So, let's clear the track and try again while the instrument is muted. See? And even if you make a mistake, just let it run for a few bars and then correct it via the step sequencer. Everybody will think it was intentional. Okay, so let's use this technique to tap in the offbeat hand claps. At that point, Jeff also mutes the rim shot. It has served its purpose and it would just clutter up the beat anyway. Currently, this beat is very uniform. If you don't look at the step sequencer, you wouldn't know where you are. Every quarter of this beat is exactly the same. To remedy that situation, Jeff now drops an anchor in the bass drum track, right here. One sixteenth note or one step before the second beat. This gives it structure and we can use it as an orientation for tapping in the next beats. Now Jeff performs a rhythm on the low and mid toms. Sadly, on the RD9, you can't tap in multiple instruments at once. This means I have to keep my left hand on the instrument selector buttons while I tap in the respective instrument with my right hand on the trigger button. The beat starts at the one end, so step 3. I'll slow it down a bit. Pay close attention to what happens when the pattern repeats. Did you catch it? The phrase starts with a mid tom, but on the second run through, I record an additional low tom on top of it. One more time. And once again at full speed. Now we need to prepare a full bar of 16th note closed hats. 
Turn the decay down and mute the instrument. If your drum machine can record note repeats, you can use this to fill up the sequencer. If not, you'll have to turn on each step by hand. And finally, unmute. The rim shot still contains the metronome, so let's clear it. Instead we'll play this rhythm. One hit, followed by two double hits. Be sure to start the rhythm here, on beat 2, so step 5. Now back at full tempo, you'll have to be quick for this one. If you can't keep up with one hand, you can alternate between both hands. So, you know the drill, tap it and mute it for later. Jeff Mills now completely stops the sequencer for one bar. There are four things you will have to do. First, you will have to stop the sequencer right before it reaches the first beat again. Second, you will have to keep track of the beat, for example by counting, tapping your foot, or making some other rhythmic movement. Third, while you're doing that, you will have to unmute the rim shot. And finally, you will need to start the sequencer again exactly after one bar. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Just like with the closed hats, we'll prepare a bar of snare hits. Except for steps 1 and 3, we'll remove those. Now we will increase the decay of the closed hat. During the last quarter of the beat, we will now quickly turn up the snare volume. But by the end of the bar, the snare and the hi-hat will both have to be silent again. Now here comes a very tricky part. You will have to start and stop the sequencer over and over again, in sync with the beat, so that the kick drum plays eighth notes, like this. Pay attention to the rim shot on step two. You have to stop the sequencer before it reaches that rim shot. That's not exactly easy to do at 134 BPM. But to make life easier, we can just remove the rim shot on step two. Mute the hand clap, then the rim shot. Remove step 9 of the bass drum, tap in 8th note ride cymbals, and essentially go nuts on the drum machine for another 10 minutes. As always, you can find this transcription and many more on our Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this one, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell. And tell us in the comments which beats you'd like to have us dissect in future episodes of Drum Patterns Explained. Bye, Bunny.